everybody, welcome to ARE Live. I'm Mark Tier, the founder of Black Spectacles, and today, again, I'm with uh, Mike Newman, and we're going to be discussing another ARE 5 exam, a project development and documentation exam. So this exam is one of the two exams you might take if you're doing the ARE 4 to ARE 5 transition, or what we've started calling the 5 exam plan, um, where you can take three exams in ARE 4 and then finish up with two exams in ARE 5. So this is one of those two uh, ARE 5 exams that you'd need to take. Uh, so this is a very timely session. Uh, I assume all of you guys know that ARE 5 launches on November 1st. Um, so the clock is ticking. We're actually heads down here at Black Spectacles uh, building our brand new ARE 5 curriculum, which it's hard to believe uh, <laughs> will launch on Friday, October 1st. So about a day and a half it's going to launch. So be sure to check back you know, with us on Friday to see the curriculum. Um, we're also launching some new tools for the ARE 4.0 um, and made some changes to our design software um, subscriptions. So there's a ton to see. Make sure you come back and, and check it out. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention our next ARE Live. So we're going to do an in-person ARE Live next <coughs> month on uh, October 20th. And we're going to do it here at, at Black Spectacles offices at 1871 in the Merchandise Mart here in Chicago. Um, we'll again be collaborating with our friend Mike Newman here, um, as well as our friends uh, at AIA Chicago's Young Architects Forum. And we'll be featuring three young architects, um, each of whom will have committed to sort of taking a different path to pass the ARE. One's going to be taking only the ARE. Uh, we'll find out why. The other's only taking ARE 5.0. We'll find out why. And the other is doing this five, five exam uh, plan uh, where you take those only the five exams. So it'll be a good way um, to sort of discuss the benefits of the different uh, strategies. So you can decide what is best for you. Um, uh, as I say, it's a live in-person event here. So we're going to have free drinks. So there'll be beer. Um, there'll be food. Uh, space is limited. So if you want to register to attend for free, of course, um, you can see the, uh, the URL on the, on the screen here, but for those of you who are listening, it's bksp.es slash ARE live dash RSVP. So again, that's bksp.es slash ARE live dash RSVP. Um, does the beer actually help in passing the ARE? Yeah, actually, I've, I've heard You've that. You've heard, um, it is one of, the, in, one of the anecdotes we've heard. Yeah, it actually improves uh, pass, <laughs> pass rates. Um, we'll be doing a, a, a PDF uh, report on that later this year. Um, anyways, we'll be giving away free teas. Um, should be a lot of fun, a uh, great way to meet a lot of new people um, if you're new to this whole thing and trying to make a decision about what to do. So, um, And for those of you who are tuned in, and of course, you know, if you're not in Chicago, um, you know, buy a plane ticket, get here. <laughs> um, but if that's out of the, out of the question, um, we'll be broadcasting live as usual. Um, and you can register at blackspectacles.com slash podcast. As I said, I'm here with Mr. Newman. Uh, if you don't know Mike, he's an adjunct professor at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. He's also the founder of Shed Studio and he's the instructor for Black Spectacles online ARE exam prep curriculum. Uh, if you haven't already checked out the ARE exam prep curriculum that I was just talking about, you can go to blackspectacles.com to watch any of the free videos um, from any of the courses. Today we have a special Black Spectacles promo code to share. Um, and at the end of today's episode, um, we'll choose someone from all the folks who submitted their answers to the mock exam and they'll win a free one month ARE prep Black Spectacles subscription. I guess you'll get to pick if you want to do the ARE 4 or ARE 5. Um, and we'll be tracking your answers. Everyone who gets them all right will get a free Black Spectacles t-shirt. So stay tuned for that too. And lastly, tonight we'll be taking questions using the GoToWebinar question box, as well as on Twitter using the ARE Live podcast hashtag. So that's ARE Live podcast. That's the hashtag. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Mr. Newman. Okay. Uh, so as Mark says, uh, we're getting very close to this uh, big transition. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it because we've already talked about it in a lot of other situations and my guess is that everybody is pretty familiar, but just to kind of put it into context, uh, remember that the ARE4, the existing system for exam, is based on the idea of uh, individual silos of information. So there's a structures exam, there's a systems exam, there's a contracts exam, there's a site planning exam, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, that concept is sort of, uh, it's not really a great way to really think about how architecture actually works out in, in the real world. 
Uh, it doesn't really match how, how we, uh, we work out in the field. Uh, and so NCARB decided in their wisdom to make a leap from that kind of silo thinking into the ARE5 construct, which uh, has two exams that are sort of standalone exams. Uh, one is about sort of general practice management, like how you run a firm, you know, insurance and contracts and stuff like that. The other one is about uh, project management, a kind of overall idea of how projects get run. And then the other four are chronological in the sequence of how a project would go. So the first one is about kind of, first of that four is about uh, the idea of uh, programming and that kind of thing. The second one is about uh, kind of a design development uh, sort of level of thinking, kind of schematic design, design development. And the third one is then about kind of uh, construction documents and kind of that permit level of thinking, the uh, kind of really getting into the details and how you communicate that information to uh, contractors, things like that. Uh, uh, and that's the one that we're going to be talking about today. And then the last one uh, is the, the sixth of the six exams is the one uh, that is about what your role as an architect is during the construction of a project. So clearly there's a big difference between four and five. As I said, four is about these individual silos. Five is much more about uh, kind of the flow of how a project really works out in the real world. Uh, in my mind, uh, we've talked about this before, in my mind that's actually a good thing. I think NCARB has been very smart about this as a process. Uh, and I think there's something really interesting about kind of thinking of the, of the exam in that way. It puts uh, more of an onus on kind of really understanding when you would need to know certain pieces of information and you know, where you're really thinking about it, where you're focusing on at any particular moment in the process, which I think is great. The tricky part about it is in the 4.0 version, there's a certain clarity to it that may not make sense in terms of how we work out in the world, but it does kind of make sense in terms of an exam, right? Uh, if I have a structures exam, well, I can just focus on structures for a month and then take all the structural que structure questions. Uh, same with systems, same with contracts. Whereas in this system, this 5.0 system, now we're talking about the idea that, you know, you could have a structures question in the programming phase. There might be something that says, well, you know, here's a bunch of soil information uh, and you're just getting the, the site uh, survey information. And now you have to think, well, what kind of uh, project would make sense? Do we want to, uh, you know, what kind of uh, impact does this soil have in terms of a structural question? The next exam, there might be a question that's more about kind of general planning issues. Is it long span? Is it a short span? What kind of choices would I have in that? And then in the third one, it might be a structural question that's about, all right, we've chosen that we're going to do, say, steel wide flange construction. Uh, how would we size that, ma that material? What might the connections be like? Uh, you know, so in, in other words, you're going to have structural questions on a number of different exams. You're going to have systems questions on a number of different exams. You'll have contract questions on a number of different exams. So I think even though I like the idea of it, I don't know that it's easier for you. So uh, we'll see. Proof will be in the pudding. Like who knows exactly what it'll be like until they actually uh, launch in November. Uh, but uh, it's sort of an interesting moment and I think it's going to be uh, intriguing to see how people feel about uh, using the 5.0. So uh, we're sort of excited by the concept. We're uh, kind of gearing up to, uh, to launch our new 5.0 uh, uh, sort of system for uh, thinking about how these things are going to work. We're uh, very excited by that. But you're at this point where you need to decide, well, am I going to try to do it under four? Am I going to try to you know, keep, keep rolling in four if you've already started or start in four? Uh, or am I going to try to do the transition as Mark was talking about? There's this sort of interesting possibility for doing the whole thing in, in fewer exams if you're very clever about it, the three plus two. Or do you just want to wait until the 5.0 and all the bugs are out and you're going to uh, sort of let it settle down for a little bit and then you're going to blast through everything in, in 5.0. They're all possibilities. There is no right answer. It's really just finding your comfort zone from the information that, uh, that we have. So on that Let's dive in. Um, we're going to be talking about one of the particular new types of uh, questions that will show up on the 5.0 exam that didn't, doesn't exist on the 4.0 exams. 
And that's the case study idea. And the reason that we wanted, to, first of all, is we wanted to give people a chance to see what it looks like. But the other reason that we wanted to uh, kind of start with this uh, as a, a sort of way of thinking about this information is that we think it's kind of representative of the way that NCARB is trying to now uh, reimagine the exam. So for many years now, uh, decades really, uh, the exam has really been focused on um, well, the vignettes, which are sort of the crazy drawing program under 4.0, uh, but also these multiple choice questions that are standalone multiple choice questions. And so you have these very limited uh, sort of moments of here's a question, there's a very limited bunch of amount of information about the topic. You have to sort of divine uh, from, from that limited piece of information what it is they're actually looking for you to answer. Uh, and it's each one is sort of a little haiku in a way, and it's sort of this awkward uh, process because there's so little information uh, to sort of put it into context. And under 5.0, part of their thinking is that's not really architectural, that architectural situations are really where I have a bunch of different pieces of information, and then I have a series of different issues I have to work out. And I may need to go uh, to uh, a site plan to understand one part of the information, but then go to the code to understand another part of the information. And I put those pieces of information together, and now I can answer a question. So this is the case studies. And all of the 5.0 exams will have at least one case study. Some of the bigger exams, like this one, will probably have two, although maybe not right off the bat, because they may take them a while to build up uh, enough uh, questions for it, but each exam will have at least one case study, some will have two, and the way it will work is you'll have a series of your regular multiple choice questions to start the exam, and then you get to a certain point and it like, goes to a new type of page, and it says, all right, you're now at the case study point, uh, and there'll be a series of different tabs from which you can access a bunch of pieces of information. So it might be a tab for some code information or for uh, the zoning code or uh, there might be another tab for a site plan or photos or something like that. You could have a whole series, it might be five tabs or might be eight tabs. Uh, you know, we'll see how they do it, but it'll be many pieces of information. And then there'll be anywhere from about 12 to 25 questions that pertain to any or all of those different pieces of information. So you'll have to decide, do you want to go through and look at all the different tabs and read through you know, much of the information? You're not going to read from the beginning to the end because you know, something like a code, there may be you know, 100 pages of code in there uh, and you wouldn't want to just start reading, it'd take forever. But you'd maybe go through and figure out kind of what's, what they've given to you and what kind of information is there and then go to the questions or you might decide, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go straight to the questions, figure out what they're really looking for in the question, and then I'm going to go f search it out in the uh, tabs of information. So there's no real right answer. This is one of the things you're going to start kind of getting used to and having your own opinion about how you want to attack the information. So this is a very different idea than just uh, a you know, small standalone type question. Uh, this is now potentially something where you might have to sort of contact a couple of different sources of information uh, and then uh, gather that information together to, in order to answer a question. Or there might be mixed in there ones that you actually don't need to use any of the information that they've given you. You just use your uh, common sense and, and architectural knowledge. So uh, you'll be def deciding as you go along how I'm going to use all of these different tabs of information. Mm -hmm.